Welcome to Real Estate Investing for Professional Men and Women, the podcast that guides professionals to financial prosperity. Join our community and let's start building your wealth. Here's your host, Gary Wilson. Hello, everybody. Welcome to uh, Real Estate Investing for Professional Men and Women. Welcome aboard chiropractor, dentist, engineer, pilot, military, accountant, teacher, God bless you all and welcome aboard. This is specifically for us. I'm, I'm a, a well, computer science major going back to, I hate to admit it, 1985 <laughs> and, uh, and spent a lot of years in the corporate world in banking. And uh, so I remember what it was like when I first got started investing. Uh, it was, you know, the, the late night gurus teaching all that no money down stuff because people would tell them they didn't have any money. And interest rates were through the roof. It was insane. Uh, and then the tax reform act in 1986 came out and changed everything for a lot of people. So in any case, that's how I got started. And I want to share with you uh, what I've learned over the last 30 years. And this is for people just like us. This isn't just to emphasize. Um, I'm not going to be teaching you a lot of uh, Hail Mary pass type techniques, because quite frankly, uh, while they do work, OK, it takes a lot of time. I mean, my gosh, you got to look at hundreds of thousands of properties, make hundreds of offers. Open one of them sticks. Hope you find that one guy that's like so desperate, he's, you know, whatever the circumstances are, um, you know, you don't have to put any money down and they finance for you. You know, I mean, think about how would you like if somebody approached you with that offer? Right. Exactly. Not too many people like that. So this is for people who look at investing as a business because it is. If you've, you've probably got a practice right now. Maybe you have your own business. Maybe you're an engineer with a HVAC business or you're a chiropractor with your own practice. Okay. The fact is, real estate investing, it's a business, too. I mean, your properties or your inventory, your tenants, every month they vote with their dollars that they're going to pay you for providing a good product, which was the property that they're living in, your inventory, okay? You got income expense, you got profit and loss, you got assets and liabilities. In fact, everything, the, the accounting is all the same when you when you do your tax returns. So I like working with people like me, like you, because we look at things differently. We look at things through a business person's eyes. And as a result, we are far more profitable when it comes to real estate investing, long-term, bigger wealth and income. So welcome aboard. The podcast is designed specifically for you. Uh, we do, and by the way, we do invest responsibly, honorably, and ethically in the communities that we do invest in. We, we always whenever possible, band together or maybe join forces with the local municipality or perhaps put in new sidewalks and new streetlights. Um, I tell you what, you can literally lift an entire neighborhood. And let's face it, guys, if you got a business or a practice in that area in one house at a time, one duplex at a time, improve that little corner of that neighborhood, which improves the area, you're going to profit a lot more ways than just getting rents coming in. Okay, Your practice is going to profit also. And just remember this, one more thing, and I promise I'll get to the subject today, is real estate investing is not the end game. It's not. It's actually the beginning. It's the foundation upon which you can launch other things you're passionate about. You can leverage your practice right now, pull out a business loan, for example, set up another LLC to put properties in, and you can loan money from your the money you borrow against your practice. You can loan that to your LLC, the business loan and use that to put that a, a down payment on a property inside that LLC. Well, the profits from that LLC buy you time from get you out from behind that chair so you can start focusing on building your practice too and bring in a recent college graduate, have them take on the appointments, okay? And you be the rainmaker. You're the boss. You're the visionary, and you're the one profiting and building wealth and income, okay? The two work hand in hand. Real estate and your practice work hand in hand, okay? So in any case, uh, um, uh, let's go ahead and jump into today's subject. Uh, we're going to talk about what are the steps involved with actually analyzing a property from the physical standpoint. You, you remember the last podcast, we talked about how do you actually uh, end up at the properties? How do you find the right properties in the right areas? We went through that whole process. Today, we're going to talk about is what happens when you get to the property to actually look at the property. This is assuming you've already done your legwork, your homework. Use your computer, use your brain, may more efficiently. That whole process, by the way, we've got it down to a science. We can do that in a couple hours. We can actually do desktop analysis on several hundred properties very quickly. The reason that's important is 
when we go physically look at properties, these are the ones we already know make the most sense from a from financial standpoint. We've eliminated the wheat, we separated the wheat from the chaff. We're narrowing things down to the ones that make the most sense, not the most expensive, not the cheapest, the ones that make the most sense for you. Okay. So here's what we do. And by the way, your investor agent is an absolutely critical member of this team, obviously. Um, you work hand in hand, they're trained specifically to work with you. Uh, and me too, by the way. Okay. And again, you can locate them on the community site on myinvestorservices.com. So uh, just sign up, become a member, and it's 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 uh, easy. You get access to all the tools, cash buyer reports, private lender reports, um, calculator spreadsheets, everything, every all the websites for researching people and properties. It's all out there. Okay, and uh, once you're in, you don't have to pay for it. It's all paid for. So, in any case, we're assuming you get to the point now where you're going to you're going to you and your investor agent are going to be looking at at six properties. Let's just take one for example. And I'm going to take this, I'm going to use the approach here in this description, this, this uh, narrative here coming up, is if you're the client and I'm the investor agent, okay? So we drive, we're going to look at property A, the first property, property number one. Now, just imagine you're driving down the street and to put yourself in the consumer's mind, let's assume this is a flip again, and you're going to buy this property and remodel it, rehab it, put it back on the market and sell for big profit. Well, who's going to buy the house? Well, somebody, the, the, the demographic is a middle-class family looking to buy a median price home with 2.1 children. That's the demographic. That's the average, what we call the avatar, all across U.S. and Canada. That's the most common uh, consumer, the most common purchase is that, that one. So put yourself in their shoes. They're driving down the street. What do they want to see? Well, they want to see a nice street with off-street parking, shrubbery, flowers being planted, flower gardens. They don't want to see toys strewn all over the yards. They don't want to see the streets clogged up with cars because there's no driveway, right, or no garage. They want to be in a neighborhood that they want to live in. So you got to think, see things from their eyes, okay? So you're driving down the street. You tape, you pay attention to the street. You pull up close to the property. What's the first thing you notice? Well, of course, you see the house, trees, whatever's outside. And you also, when you step out of the car, you see the sidewalk in the driveway and the mailbox. It's the first three things, once you've taken the, the panoramic view you're driving up when you pull up in your car and you're looking, you, you look out, you look out and you see, you don't want to see cracks on sidewalks. You don't want to see slabs on sidewalks uneven, things like that. You don't want to see a nice clean sidewalk, okay? You look at the driveway, same thing. You don't want to see pads of the driveway lifting and shifting and cracking and all that kind of stuff and, and flaking away because that means money out of your pocket. Somebody's got to fix that stuff. Okay, now the reality is those uh, you want to see it from the consumer's perspective. The person who's going to buy the house to live in, we call it the end user or owner occupant. But at the same time, you're looking for opportunity to increase value. So if you see, uh, remember, concrete driveways are expensive, guys. Um, if that's the only thing wrong with the property, then maybe we'll 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 make an offer that, that accounts for that, and we have the money to put in a new driveway. But for right now, all we're doing is we're taking pictures and taking notes. And we always start with the outside and we start with in order the way the consumer is going to look at this also. So make a note. Does, does the driveway need to be repaired? Does the sidewalk need to be repaired? Do they need to be replaced? How about the mailbox? Is the mailbox leaning over? Is it old and rusted? Get rid of it. Replace the, the mailbox. Okay, so you put this in your notes. Now you're going up the steps or up the sidewalk to the front porch or front door and you see some landscaping there's a tree there's a mulch bed there's some shrubbery there's some flowers are there weeds in the mulch bed how are the flowers looking how is the shrubbery overgrown does it need to be trimmed back does the edging need to be redone between the mulch and the grass okay does the grass look like it needs to be reseeded and fertilized or has it got patches of brown and gray and dirt and weeds and all kinds of stuff so make notes of all this stuff remember we're looking at the outside first now real quick before we go in the front door, we're actually going to go around the house, okay? Walk around the outside of the house. Pay attention to the foundation that you can see, the exterior of the foundation. Um, look for step cracks and things like that, okay? Step cracks aren't that big of a deal, guys, by the way. If you see a crack where uh, it's a concrete block foundation and 
on one side of the crack, the wall, the blocks are higher than the blocks on the other side of the crack. Well, that could be a, a foundation issue. What we call a footer maybe has dropped or cracked underneath the foundation. Or if you see the wall on one side of the crack is pushed in, the other side is pulling out, things like that. Those are signs of bigger problems. And you'll need to secure that with wall anchor and things like that. Right now, we're just making observations and taking notes. You also look at the siding. Is it brick? Is it aluminum? Is it vinyl? What is it? Make make notes of that. Take pictures. And and because we're going to determine that that siding needs to be refinished or replaced. You're also going to look at the exterior of all the windows and doors. What I look for is um, either the, it's already trimmed, the soffit and the fascia are finished and wrapped in aluminum. Okay. Um, I don't like to see uh, wood exposed because that means labor down there. It means work down the road. I know the windows are current or modern contemporary windows, you know, current generation, uh, double pane, double hung, you know, vinyl clad. I like those kind of windows, right? Uh, American Craftsman makes great windows, right? And affordable prices. Gary Wilson here. I just wanted to uh, let you guys know, remind you that we do have our very next three day event coming up uh, April 5th, 6th, and 7th at the Anaheim Marriott, right outside the gates of uh, world famous Disneyland, located at 700 West Convention Way, of course, in Anaheim, zip code 92082. Okay. Uh, you can you can go to myinvestorservices.com, look for the information on the event. Um, also, you can uh, uh, contact us, um, support at myinvestmentservices.com, or call 1-800-931-2605. So this is for you, you're, whether you're a chiropractor, dentist, teacher, fireman, policeman, pilot, military, engineer, uh, you know, this is designed to bring you together to to talk about investing the right way. So what this not is, this is not the no money down owner financing stuff. OK, I'll show you how to invest uh, if you don't have a lot of cash right now or no cash. OK, just we just do it differently. We don't we don't put you at risk by doing hard money loans, borrowing against other people. It, you know, 10, 12, 15 percent with a lots of points that chew up all your equity and, and cash flow. We actually show you how to leverage what you've already got and borrow against yourself. You probably have more than you actually realize even you have, especially if you have your own practice or your own business, okay? And by the way, the cool thing about this is you're going to meet the people you need to meet to support you. And I've, I've trained over 20,000 investors and agents around the U.S. and Canada last several years. And at the event, there will be a lot of agents there right here in your area in Southern California that I personally train to work with us, to work with you and me on investing. These are not regular realtors. They're focused, they're certified, they work specifically with us, flipping homes and buying fourplexes and stuff like that. So when you come and connect with them, get the tools, you get the tools, you get the strategies, you get everything you need, okay, uh, so that you can succeed. So uh, this is designed specifically for you. It's not for everybody. That's why we narrow down uh, the, the target audience, just, just for you and others just like you. So uh, welcome aboard, look forward to seeing you there. Uh, reach out, contact us, grab yourself a spot. There's some specials going on. I've got an agent right now meeting with chiropractors at the local uh, association dinners, for example. Um, so uh, come on aboard, come join the community, bring your children, let them go to Disneyland on Sunday. We're done a half a day on Sunday anyways. You can join them and enjoy the rest of the day there. So God bless you. We'll see you there. Bye-bye. So in any case, we're looking at the exterior of the house. We're also going to see if, if there's a chimney. We're going to make an observation of the chimney. Does a chimney brick need to be pointed? Is it is it in good shape? Um, also, the roofing, if you can get a, a, a look at the roof from different angles from the yard, if there's an elevated place in the yard, I suggest you go to it. And my suggestion is always bring a pair of small uh, binoculars with you. We used to call them field glasses, real short, uh, small pair. Don't They don't need to be the big giant kind, just something you can fit in your pocket. So you can look at the roof and look and see if the roof looks to be fairly new or is it missing shingles. A lot of the shingles have that that pitting in their pocking, you know, the pox, the missing uh, tar and, and gravel and all that kind of stuff. Um, so we're looking at the condition of the roof. The, we're looking for, our, looking for our big ticket items. Now out in the yard again, we're also looking for things like this. Is there shrubbery around the yard? Does it need to be taken care of? Does any shrubbery need to be replaced? We're also looking for fencing. If, if there's a fence there and it's in good shape, I'll keep it. But if the fence is in bad shape, guys, I'm probably just going to get rid of it. It's just not worth the effort 
of ripping out an old fence and putting in a new fence. Usually it costs several thousand dollars. It's a big ticket item. Now, on the other hand, there is material you can buy now to basically like repaint a fence, refinish an old metal fence if you want. Um, but that's that's kind of a unique situation. Just uh, uh, if the fence is solid and good shape, it's just uh, faded and old. It's a very light surface rust around the hinges and things like that. I'll, I'll repaint it. But there's a certain product you can use so that it's uh, um, rust preventative, uh, uh, moisture barrier, that type of thing. In any case, um, is there a shed? What kind of condition is the shed? And again, if the shed is in bad shape, I'm just going to get rid of it. Okay, I'm not going to replace the shed. Um, people, if a shed's not there when people look at it, they never knew there was a shed there to begin with. They don't miss it. Okay, um, swing sets. Well, let me tell you, if it's in nice and good shape, I'll keep it. Or if it's the, you know, uh, pressure treated wood, jungle gym type thing, I'll definitely keep it. But if it's old, dilapidated, I'm getting rid of that thing. Just get rid of it. Anything that's an eyesore like that is not a necessity. It's usually less expensive just to get rid of it. If it's halfway decent, it's just not, it's just aesthetically not appealing. Put an ad in the paper. If you're in Canada, use Kijiji. If you're in the States, use Craigslist. And say, hey, free jungle gym, free swing set, you haul, come and grab it, right? Um, in any case, what we're looking for is the opportunity to create a nice, clean, open, spacious yard that they can see where they can put in a fire pit, uh, whatever. Oh, by the way, speaking of um, other things, pools. Now, if we're in Florida or any one of the southern states, you know, the, what we call the smile, going from Florida all the way to Southern California, it's very common for almost every house to have a pool. So I would probably keep a pool if there was one there. But if I'm in one of the northern states and that pool's in bad shape, I ain't going to deal with it, okay? Um, I'll just I'll just bust it up, cave it in, and fill it in with dirt and put, a, put grass, plant grass over it, bury that thing, and, and uh, say a prayer for the old pool. Um, it's just not worth the hassle, okay? In uh, any case, I'm looking for a opportunity to create a nice clean usable yard so that's the outside now here's the inside we're going back we've gone around the whole house 360 degrees we're now going to go in the front door and this is the easy part okay this is going to go fast we go right to the big systems first we do not go to the kitchen and bathroom we go to find the furnace the water tank the electric panel right away we're looking for a breaker panel not the old glass fuses if we have old glass fuses we got to replace the panel, which means you also have to replace the meter socket outside and off of the service line. Okay, furnace. If it doesn't look like it's within the last five years, I'm going to assume I've got to replace it. I might not have to replace it, but I'm going to assume I do because it's better to assume the expense and not have to take the expense than to not assume it. Find out later on, you got to replace the furnace. Same thing with the water tank. Water tanks are not that expensive. What I'm looking for are signs of corrosion, rust, or oxidation around the perimeters, around the, the, the valves, things like that. Okay. So, by the way, while we're in the basement, we're also going to look for signs of moisture, mold, and things like that. Okay. Uh, and, and any bowing in the walls, cracks in the walls, things like that. Um, in any case, also looking for the opportunity to at least partially finish the basement. I can parse the walls and paint them. I can also put indoor outdoor carpet in and on the floor and make that thing a usable, uh, what appears to be a, a finished basement. Okay, then I go upstairs. First room I go to is the kitchen. Right away, I'm looking for appliances, how old, how new, how many. Um, I generally want to, when I'm flipping out, I want to provide refrigerator, stove, dishwasher, microwave. Those are the top four. Now I'm looking at the cabinetry, and if it's the old, uh, cheap, Right, particle board type stuff. I'm going to rip it out and replace it. However, if I've got a good set of solid base cabinets, it just maybe that's a little bit dated. What I will do is I will refinish or replace the door and drawer fronts and the knobs and replace the countertop. I also replace the sink basically too in the faucet, unless they're like brand new. And what I'll do is I'm refacing, refinishing the kitchen that's there. It looks like it's brand new. I've, I think people have actually told me, I love this brand new kitchen. <laughs> Lo and behold, it's the old original base cabinetry. I just redid the uh, the door and drawer fronts, okay? Also, um, um, light, uh, lighting all over the house, we look at that. But, but back in the kitchen, real quick, flooring. Uh, 
I will often almost always go for tile floor in the kitchen. Okay. I love hardwood floors. And if I, it's the right kind of kitchen, I'll do it in there too if it's already there. But if it's not there, I'm not going to put hardwood floors in the kitchen. I will put tile. Now, I will, if there's hardwood floors in the living room and dining room that's covered by carpet, and I lift up a corner of the carpet and the old hardwood floors are there in good shape, I'll refinish them in the living room and dining room. I will always put carpet in the bedroom. Okay. So, in any case, let's now move down the hallway to the bathroom or bathrooms. What I'm looking for there is, uh, is the tub. Uh, a modern tub. If it's not, perhaps I can uh, refinish the tub called reglazing and then put tile wall around the tub. It'll look like it's brand new. Amazing how you can do that for a fraction of the cost of ripping out that tub and replacing it. Remember, if you can reglaze an old tub and get rid of whatever siding uh, or tub surround is on there and put in tile, brand new diverter kit with the shower head, looks like it's brand new. With the kitchen cabinet, I mean, the, the sink cabinet, same thing. If it doesn't look like it's new, I'm going to replace it with a new combination sink cabinet. And, and uh, it looks like it's brand, it's cheap. It's a, a very affordable. Okay, toilet, um, same thing. Very inexpensive to replace. I want it brand spanking new. Same thing with the floor in the bathroom, tile floor. Okay, uh, now the next thing is this, and it's very easy. The rest of the room, the bedrooms, what we're looking for are lighting. Door uh, doorknobs on the closets in the bedroom door. So the bedroom doors and closet doors are not in good shape. I'm going to replace them because they're very inexpensive to replace. Put brand new doorknobs on them. I put brand new lighting in. I can put ceiling fans in the bedrooms. You cannot put ceiling fans in the kitchens anymore. The fire code won't allow it. Okay, ceiling fans in bedrooms. Um, also, I'll replace the outlet and switch plates. Okay, they look they get brand new, which they cost like. 12 cents a piece. <laughs> Just pay somebody 10 bucks an hour to go around and replace all the, the switch and outlet plates. Okay. In any case, I'm making notes of all this stuff. Uh, also, there's the condition of the walls and, the, and, the, and the, whatever color the paint is. I'm always looking for relatively neutral paints, but not like plain white. I will use um, satin on the walls, semi gloss on the trim, the same family of same color family, just different shade. Okay. Uh, the trim will often be lighter than the walls. Okay, uh, Ralph Lauren makes great paints, great colors for houses. It looks very sophisticated. Do the two tone. Remember, the trim should be different than the than the wall paint. The 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 uh, the color itself, same color family, just a different shade. Okay, and I'll and when in doubt, just make the trim white, white semi gloss. Okay. Um, any case, uh, that's pretty much it. That's for a flip. You make all the notes, take all your pictures. Now you got yourself at the beginnings of a great project uh, project sheet that you can hand off to a contractor and also go to Lowe's or Home Depot and get yourself your materials list, okay, and get the exact pricing. And um, that's how you do it, guys. So I hope you like this. Uh, 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 stay tuned. Make sure you subscribe to the podcast. Yeah, obviously, it's on iTunes, um, I, I Heart Music, a couple different locations. Just go on and subscribe to it. Obviously, it doesn't cost you anything. Um, also, go to myinvestmentservices.com, and you can register there to be on the uh, in the members area, the several level members area, where you get access to all those calculators and websites for researching people and properties. Um, also, access to all the investor agents, okay, and access to who's uh, the private lenders in your area. All the calculators and spreadsheets, everything is out there for you. And and by the way, a couple of hundred previously recorded webinars on every subject you could possibly imagine right at your fingertips, okay? Uh, a lot more out there, a lot more to meet the eye, but go ahead and do that, and uh, we will see you guys on the next uh, podcast. In the meantime, take care of yourselves, you and your family. Uh, God bless, and we will see you next time. Okay, bye-bye. Thanks for listening to this episode of Real Estate Investing for Professional Men and Women. Be sure to go to myinvestmentservices.com to join our community and start building wealth today.